In Color, the continuing story of Peyton Place. Starring Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi, Ryan O'Neill as Rodney Harrington, Barbara Parkins as Betty Anderson, Christopher Connolly as Norman Harrington, Patricia Morrow as Rita Harrington, James Douglas as Stephen Cord. The Reverend Tom Winter has just heard his home described as an ideal environment for young Jill Smith and her baby. His home is not ideal because Tom Winter has been fighting against his feelings for Jill for some time now, a fact which his wife, Susan, suspects, and for reasons of her own, enjoys. What time does the next sermon go on? As soon as I find something worthwhile preaching about. How about man and his conscience? You're presuming that he has a conscience to begin with. Doesn't he? Thinking about the social worker? Somewhat. Well, I feel absolutely marvelous knowing that the seal of approval has been stamped on our ideal household. Aren't you thrilled? All right. No, really, I feel I finally made a success of my life. Weren't they marvelous, the personal questions? I don't want to talk about it. Why not? Aren't you proud to know that you have finally succeeded in fooling everyone? Score one for us. Too bad we're such hypocrites. Susan, I keep hearing your words. Which words? What I'm doing, why I'm here. Why are you hearing them now? Because I realized how dishonest it was of me to let that, let that social worker walk out of here believing that only good things happen here. This is a place where evil doesn't stand a chance. What do you mean by evil? At this point, I'm not sure what I mean. You mustn't let your congregation hear you say that. What brought this on, the social worker? I was part of it. Do I get to hear the other part? No, no. When? Oh. Sometime, perhaps, maybe. Maybe never. Why? Because what I'm talking about, feelings, emotions, and I may not be able to express them. You're keeping something from me. No. You are, you know it, and so do I. I couldn't lie to you. Darling, I don't mind you being dishonest with me. Maybe I deserve it, but please don't be dishonest with yourself. I'm trying not to be. You have to try harder now, don't you? Yeah. Wasn't this way before, why now? I don't know. Tom, of course you know. When we were first married, I didn't know the difference between bourbon and scotch. And hypocrisy was your enemy, not your friend. Where did we get this marvelous education? Do you suppose all the years in the ministry? Tom, I love you so much. I hate to see you torn apart this way. You look at me as though you're asking forgiveness. Maybe I am.
Operator. Operator, I'm having a little trouble with my phone. I wonder if you might ring me back to check on it. Number, please. 555-3100. Thank you. It'd be rather impossible to break it. The board is voting on the church appropriations, and I have to present the budget. That's all right. I understand. Look, could you make it by yourself? Well, of course. Just that I, I hate to leave you at a time like this. You seem so. Oh no, look. I'm, I'll be all right. I, uh, I have a lot to do today. You go ahead. Okay. I'll call you from Boston. And let you know what time I'll be back. All right. Now take care of driving. Huh? I will. Carolyn left? Yes, why? We were going to meet at the beach. You were? Well, didn't she tell you I, I phoned? Oh, the phone call. Of course. Anyway, I'd like to talk to you about something. Hello. All right, come on in. Thank you. You're uh, looking well. Thank you. You're... Very lucky. Lucky? It's a finest place. It has a nice feeling to it. Cheerful. Yes, it's comfortable. I like it. Well constructed, too. You can't beat these older houses. Fred, you didn't come here to talk about the house. That's right. Although I am interested in where my daughter and my... Ex-wife? My ex-wife. I, I don't know why that sounds so awkward. Because it is awkward. And it's awkward for you to come here like this. I agree. But there won't be any more of these awkward or embarrassing situations. I've asked for a transfer to the Boston office. Oh? It came through several days ago, so I'll be leaving early next week. I see. I realize it isn't much after what I've put you through. But I wanted to make things easier. Do something to... Fred. Fred, you just don't have to do anything. All settled and done with. You have no further obligation. Well, that's why I've decided to get out of your way, to give you a chance to, well, to, to get on with your life. Well, don't feel that you have to leave town on my account. Why, Fred, I've only leased this place temporarily. Carol and I are moving to New York in the fall. I don't think you should. I'm, I mean, of course, it's, it's up to you. But we both know how Carolyn feels. She grew up here. This is her home. It'd be awfully rough on her to move away with, with only one more year of high school. She seems to be running around with a nice group of kids. Uh, she's happy here. Would you excuse me, Mr. Certainly. Hello. Hi there, Mrs. Russell. Uh, hi. Is that all I get? Just a hi? I don't get a hi there. How are you? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, how are you? I'm just fine, thank you very much. And you know, sometimes... Sometimes I can see through entire buildings, even mountains. I can tell exactly what you're doing, Miss Ferguson. Really? Uh oh, you sound strained. Am I interrupting something? That's all right, Mike. Uh, Fred's here, and we're discussing some business. Oh, I see. Well, well, what I wanted to talk to you about is, uh, I mean, I can talk. I can talk to you about it later, and uh, I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you then. Uh, thank you. Goodbye. Oh, well, now, uh, 
Excuse me. You were talking about Carolyn and her friend. And yours, too. Oh, please don't... What I mean is, you have your friends and interests here, too. Why should you be the one to uh, uproot yourself? I, I think it's a good thing. I'm, I'm glad to hear you're going out again and meeting new uh, people. Fred, I... I really don't think I need your approval anymore. I know that. But sometimes it clears the air to come out and say what's on your mind. We, we both know it's over between us, but I just hope you don't have any, uh, what do the kids call it, uh, hang-ups about going out and getting to know somebody else. Oh, uh, uh, Fred, have you, have you told Carolyn that you're leaving? I will, as soon as I see her. Well, since you're going away in a week, I think that she'll probably want to spend as much time with you as possible. And uh, I perfectly... I mean, um, any arrangement you want to make is fine with me. Thank you. That's, that's very generous of you. Oh, uh, one other thing, Marcia. Uh, about our divorce, you know how much I appreciate the way you handled it. The, the, the grounds, I mean. You had every right to tell the truth. I, I wouldn't have blamed you. What I'd like to know is, uh, have you changed your mind since then? Does Carolyn know the real grounds? No, Fred, she doesn't know. I haven't told her. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, take care of yourself. Be happy. 